1935, Tacoma's North End, nine-year-old George Weyerhaeuser is abducted by two men while walking home from school. Pretty close to where he got grabbed. More than eight decades later, author Brian Johnston reveals long forgotten details of the brazen daylight kidnapping. The most astonishing story that I've ever found. No clue, no matter how seemingly unimportant, can be overlooked. This case was on the front page of just about every newspaper in America. Johnston's book, Deep in the Woods, recounts how two small-time criminals, Harmon Whaley and William Daynard, hide the boy in the forest outside Issaquah. They kept him in a pit that's basically the size of a grave. Then spirit him away in the trunk of a car to the closet of a home in Spokane. At one point, the landlord stops by for a visit. Little does she know that there's a kidnapped victim 25 feet away. Involuntarily along for the ride, Whaley's 19-year-old wife, Margaret. Poor Margaret. She never asks questions, never lays eyes on the kidnapped boy. They would have her kneel down on the front seat, and then they would tip the seat over on top of her to block her vision. And then she'd just hear the, the trunk open and close. And she's like, what's going on with that? Not knowing that George Weyerhaeuser it just got stuck in the trunk. The ransom note demands an extraordinary $200,000. 133 years of salary for the average person. The kidnappers make 21 demands. Among them, keep quiet. Don't tell the police, don't tell the newspapers. So what does the newspaper do? They put the ransom note on the front page of the paper. The child snatchers instruct the family to place a classified ad in the Seattle PI when the money is ready. Using the code name Percy Mini. The kidnap switchboard. The riveted public offers hundreds of suggestions. Calls that set the G-men on the trail. Including a way to rig the suitcase carrying the ransom. This guy said, how about this? You put in a booby trap so when they open it, it sprays them with acid. Or better yet, a cobra. After receiving their payout with no snakes attached, the crooks dropped George off once again in the woods outside Issaquah. They gave him a blanket and they gave him a dollar bill. He finds his way to a local home. The farmer opens the door and George goes, Hi, I'm George Weyerhaeuser. Can you take me to my parents' house? Once safely reunited with his family, George patiently tells his story to the assembled press, then heads upstairs to greet his pet mice and a reporter was standing underneath the balcony. And he heard George saying to the mice, I'm so sorry that I had to leave you, but it couldn't be helped. <laughs> oh my goodness. Using published serial numbers from the ransom bills, the whole country is on the lookout for the fugitives. Wanted in the wirehouse or kidnapping. And they were captured because of a 20 cent cigarette case. Two alert drugstore employees note the numbers from Margaret's $5 bill. That was their undoing. The kidnappers go to prison for decades. And as for George? He just moved along with his life and had a very good life. He'll grow up to lead the family business and leave behind the most notorious kidnapping in Northwest history. It just is a remarkable story.